That can't be right. The data has to be wrong. Excuse me, Miss Morrow. Yes? What is it? Your partner asked me to give you this halfway through the flight. They also asked me to tell you it's time to wake up. I'm sorry. What's that supposed to mean? I have no idea. Would you like me to get you another drink? Uh, no, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. I just don't understand it. In theory, we're doing everything right, and yet... maybe if we were to merge again... Looks like our flagship office in Tokyo. Yes, that is exactly what it is. I'm sorry, who are you? My name is Entity. I'm an artificial intelligence system. I bring you a message from the future. What message? Ruth, if you don't radically change the way you do things, your bank will disappear in seven years and 120 days. I'm sorry, that can't be right. You can't be telling the truth. I have not been programmed to lie. I have been programmed to reveal the awakening of the banking industry to you. <sighs> Where am I? The main drivers of the change are always going to be commerce. Uh, you know, how do people get uh, to be able to reduce the cost base as much as they possibly can to deal with legislation, for instance, but at the same time make sure that the cost of change, replatforming, is not going to be prohibitive. Also, I think the other thing is that if you can show that there's a business uplift for the change. That's something that's absolutely mission critical for banks. So for example, with us as a machine learning company, it's been really essential to work out and to calculate if a bank is going to make the shift, what's the business upside going to be? What's the business case for this? There's an awful lot of talk, a lot of noise, a lot of buzzwords around technological shifts. But the thing that's essential is trying to calculate the business uplift before a bank will make any of those changes. Do traditional banks companies have the sufficient technology to face the new players? Um, probably not, is the answer. I mean, certainly for a traditional bank that's grappling with legacy systems, uh, that is a huge challenge. As I was saying earlier, there's the cost of just making a small change, uh, just the people, the manpower cost to be able to make a change inside a bank is sometimes prohibitive to actually making the change and also prioritising. Uh, you know, it's very difficult for a traditional company to be able to move away from the here and now and today's problems and to start to think about that long-term shift that's necessary. So I think that is again an area where we try to support banks in making those uh, important decisions about what's right for the future. In the end, it's all about the client and generating confidence with the client. How is the confidence of this new era going to be built and how it is going to change their relationship with clients? Well, we're already seeing a huge shift with regard to, uh, you know, sort of robotic assistance. Um, you know, in the first instance, as humans, we're going to get used to being able to deal with uh, 
robots as a first line, not other humans. Um, but, you know, I think that's something we've already learned to embrace. I think there's more of that coming, but, you know, we're already on that journey. And very often it's a better customer service than an awful, you know, it's better to talk, because the consumers say they'd much prefer to speak to a, a bot who is knowledgeable than to a human that doesn't know and can't make any decisions. So I think we are at the beginning of the journey of this, uh, uh, but it's a very exciting journey and I do believe that we will completely get used to dealing with robots as our, our first line of communication with all sorts of companies.